Thank you for being with us. It's been almost nine months since we last saw you. So I am sure that you've missed each other, but I am sure that our eyes would speak so kindly of how much we still miss each other and how much we love each other with the love of the Lord. Amen? It's been almost eight months since we last saw you. Alam niyo ba, ganun nakatagal. Diba? For some of you, this is the first time that you're seeing us and we welcome you to our, uh, to our worship service. The first in 2021. It was almost the same time last year when we were gathered together rejoicing, greeting each other, Happy New Year, Manigong Bagong Taon, Hello, Kamusta? And we were looking forward with great expectation to the year 2020. Tama po ba? We were all so excited. This year, I hope we are still as excited and as still hopeful. Pero magpakatotoo tayo. Diba? A lot of us are worried. Or I guess all of us are worried. 2020 was marked, 2020 was riddled with a lot of news. The Australia bushfires which happened, and we were all so scared because it almost engulfed the whole area. And there was a lot of um, devastation that happened. That the Al Volcano eruption, which was very real to us because a lot of us know very well that the Al Volcano and the beauty that it exudes every time we visit Tagaytay. And of course, towards the last Towards the end of the year, who would forget Bagyong Roli at Bagyong Ulysses that devastated not only the central metropolis of Metro Manila, but it seemed like it, it devastated far north and even the central areas of the Philippines. This and more news riddled our social media accounts. But I guess the most important and shocking news of all was the COVID-19 coronavirus that hit Wuhan, China, in December 2019. COVID-19 then escalated from what seemed to be a pneumonia-like um, strain of a virus when news came out from Wuhan that there was a strain of pneumonia that they were treating from dozens of uh, patients. It did bother us, did it? They're far away. We're secluded in, the, in our own little country of Singapore. And we're not going to China anywhere, any, anyway, until in January when the first death of COVID-19 happened after a great travel for, from people in China. Thus, COVID-19 transferred to Japan, South Korea, and Thailand. And from that time on, there were news of dozens, and then hundreds, and then thousands, and hundreds of thousands of people not only being infected, but also dying of the virus. Today, about 83 million people have been infected, and about almost 2 million deaths have been experienced. It changed our world. It rattled us. It concerned us. 2020 will come down into history as one wherein toilet paper was the most sought after product in the supermarkets, right? It will be, it will go down history as the year when people stayed home voluntarily. Also, it will come down history as the year where face masks becomes a fashion staple. This COVID-19 shocked the world. The world economies turned into shambles. Department stores which riddled the, the metropolis were starting to close down. And I am sure a lot of you, if I ask now, are you worried? How many of us are worried? I'm sure most of you, if not all, will raise their hands. What does 2021 have in store? Because all of, our, all of us are concerned about the future 
And no one knows what the future holds for us. And if I ask who of you are not worried, then that's something to be worried about. So today, I am going to take you to a verse in the Bible that deals with worry. It tells us not to worry. So I have entitled this conversation, Worry Not. Today, although we are facing a big, big thing, a big, big worrisome situation in 2021. Why? Because we don't know what's going to happen. We are worried of the future and what this year has, has to hold for us. But Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, wherein he was telling his disciples how it is to live, the changes that they needed to do in their lives, one of the topics that he had to talk about was that of worry. If you think that you only take a short time worrying, let me say this to you. Do you know that you worry, on the average, an average person worries about 14 hours a week. So that's about two hours a day. That's how, how much time you spend worrying, two hours a day. So that's about five years in the average lifetime of a person. And worry has been defined as this. Worry is the feeling of anxiety or trouble about actual or potential problems. We are worried even about problems that are not yet happening. The word worry in the Greek means to be divided. It is like your mind is being divided. It comes from two words, mind and divided, wherein you are being pulled between two or several, several points and you are simply divided and don't know what to do. And that becomes very confusing, right? It also has a derivative from the word Vergen in um, German, which means to choke. And isn't that what worry does to us? It chokes us. It strangles us. You don't know what to do. There are times that you cannot seem to breathe or to be able to exhaust your, your energy because you're choked with the things and the worries and the concerns that are running through your mind. This is the definition of worry that Jesus was going to talk about in, the ser in his Sermon on the Mount. The Apostle Paul also became worried. He was worried about the churches that he planted. But his worry or concern was something productive. The worry that Jesus was going to talk about is not that kind of worry. It is the worry that was, one writer has so aptly defined it, as it is like worry is like a rocking chair that you just keep on moving, but you're not going anywhere. You're not accomplishing anything. And that is what this choking, strangling, that is the definition of worry. And a lot of times through 2020, we had that feeling, right? We felt like we didn't know what to do. That we are so divided between two points that we didn't know which way to go. We are being choked by the different things that are laid before us. And we cannot simply move. We cannot decide on things that are being presented to us. Because even the Apostle Paul got worried about the churches. He got anxious about the churches that he planted. But that was healthy worry. There is such a thing as bad worry. And the worry that is going to be talked about today is that kind of worry. The worry that chokes, that strangles. The worry that, that freezes you that you don't know simply what to do. And if there's one thing that I would like us to take home today, it is this, that worry undervalues your value to God. Worry undervalues your value to God. And allow me to further define worry to be a sin. I will boldly declare that worry is a sin. Why? Because you put God as someone who is not true to his word, someone who is not true to his person, because you are saying that when you are worried, you are, tell, you are saying that God does not love you. Therefore, worry is an undervaluation of your worth to God. 
When God Himself has already said that you are the apple of His eyes, that you are a favored people, that He loves you and cares for you. When we start to worry and we start to, know, to, to not know what to do, when we start to be more concerned of the things of the world rather than what, what God is telling us, then worry is an undervaluation or a devaluation of your worth to God. So I hope you are as excited as I am. So allow me to say that um, when worry, when we worry, the value that God is giving us is actually a value that you are questioning. So let's go. It starts off with verse 25 when it says, that is why, I am reading from the New Living Translation, that is why I tell you not to worry. In other translation, it says, therefore. And we know that when the word therefore is there, you have to rewind to the previous verses, right? What was Jesus talking about? So in verse 24, he was saying, you cannot serve both God and mammon. Right? If you, will, if you will just look at the verse previews, it will say, you are not going to be able to serve both God and mammon. But mammon is actually defined as money. The whole chapter of uh, Matthew chapter 6 is actually talking about materialism. In the first verses, he says, when you give to the needy, do not, do not flaunt it. Do not announce it. Next, he teaches his people how to pray. The disciples were asking, Jesus, how do we pray? It is not what you pray, but how you pray. And in that prayer, he says, one of the parts of the prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. So it still talks about the material things of the world. He was noticing from the disciples that they were starting to wonder and, and uh, worry about the material things of the world. That's why they were starting to listen. They were starting to ask questions. Because the disciples left everything that they had, right? They left being a fisherman. Matthew left being a tax collector. And he was rich because he was a tax collector. They were starting to worry about the concerns of the world. Thus, Jesus started to sit on the mountain. Beautiful view. Grass-filled hill. He was sitting there, wind blowing through their hair. And then he starts to tell them, you cannot serve both God and mammon. It's either you will love one and hate the other. Your heart cannot fill both God and the love for possessions or the love for money. It cannot occupy the same heart. And from that, Jesus connects his teaching and says, that is why I tell you not to worry. Do not worry. Worry not. There are so many things to worry about, Jesus. How can I not worry? And Jesus says, why? Do not worry about your everyday life. Whether you have enough food to drink or enough clothes to wear. I am sure a lot of us have enough food to eat. Right? As a matter of fact, when we, when we, when we put ourselves on the weighing scale, how many kg? <gasps> when we go and... <gasps> how can that happen? I've never reached this weight before. We have more than enough food. Okay, Jesus, I'm not going to worry about that because we have more than enough food. But that was not true during the time that Jesus was talking on the Sermon on the Mount. During that time, you have to consider that they were daily wage earners. Remember the parable of the workers in the vineyard? They were only called for a day's work. So you go search for work, and then you're hired for the day. At the end of the day of your work, you're paid for the day. And then the following day, you're going to look for work again. A lot of us have our contracts three years, four years, five years. So the enough food was an issue to the Israelites who were listening to Jesus at that time. Matthew left being a tax collector, and Matthew was rich. He had a lot of money being a tax collector, and still he left that. That was a concern because they didn't know whether they would be able to have enough food to fend for their family on that day. Do not worry whether you have enough clothes to wear, he's saying. But during the time of Jesus... The only clothes that they had was the one that they were wearing. And that's it. 
So that's why the question is, do you have enough food to eat and enough clothes to wear? Because during that time, it was indeed a struggle. They were daily, daily, wa daily wage earners. And wearing clothes that they wear, noon po nauso yung wash and wear. Kasi when they take a bath, that's the same time that they wash their clothes. So they, th they throw themselves into the river, sabay, sabay laban na yon. That's why the clothes of old were dull in color. Hindi po yun dull, naturally dull, na luma na lang dahil sa sobrang dumi. So, seriously, during that time, it was really a struggle if they had enough food or enough clothes to wear. But still, Jesus said, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothes? What is the value that you are putting on the food that you eat? on the food that you're getting, and on the clothes that you wear. Are we equating ourselves, are we equating ourselves whether we have Balenciaga, Nike, Adidas, YSL, Chanel? Is that the value that you are putting on the, on the value of yourselves? That's why Jesus is saying, aren't you more than food isn't your life more than food we love our life so much that is why recently we go into all of this organic fat diet we exercise we do everything that is possible just so we can extend and take care of our lives but jesus is saying isn't your life more than that isn't your life more than the food that you're eating isn't your clothes, isn't your body more than the clothes that you have? Because worry undervalues your value to God. Ang mura mo naman, if you're only valuating yourselves as, have you gotten the, the, the Prada that you want? Have you gotten the YSL bag or the Chanel that you want? Ang mura mo pa rin. You are undervaluing your worth. Because you know how much you're worth? We were purchased by a very expensive price. Priceless. No less than the only Son of God sacrificed, sacrificed on the cross is our value. That is our worth. So if you put your value vis-a-vis -vis in today's context, your bank account, the stocks that you have, the mansions that you have bought, the condo units that you have bought, what brand of car do you have, what car, ki kind of car you have bought. If you have evaluated yourselves only that, kahit sa pinakamalaking amount of money in the bank will not equate to the value that God has for you. So why worry when you are more precious than anything that you are worrying about? That is how much of a value we are to God. And he continues, Look at the birds. Look at the birds. Lord, ano naman relasyon ng birds na yan? I'm so worried. Do you know, Lord, that when I wake up, as soon as I wake up, I already sit in front of my computer. Madilim pa po, wala pa po ang birds. Diba? As soon as I wake up, I'm already in front of my computer. The moment my boss texts and I'm not able to answer, he calls me. Right? Lord, I do not have time to look at the birds. But that is what Jesus is saying. Look at the birds. He was actually going to tell us the reason why we need to look at the birds. He says, they don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns. They are just there and they do not do anything. But did you ever see a bird that is worried? Did you ever see a bird that is grumpy, nakayoko lang ganyan, so wala siyang ginagawa? Did you ever see a bird going to and fro, walking to and fro, because he's worried where his food is gonna come? When the birds are searching for their food, they would move from one plant to another, from breads to crumbs, so, and all those times, they would be chirping and singing and delighted to see the smorgasbord or the buffet before them. People would be giving them breadcrumbs, minsan flavored pa, may taquitos, tostitos, uh, chitos, at kung ano-ano pa, di ba? We throw, we, we throw food to them. And the birds, they're happy. But one thing about, 
to take note about the birds, they just don't sit down there or, or fly up uh, or stay in one corner and open their beaks and wait for the Lord to drop the food. They still fly from one place to another to be able to harvest their food. They still work. They do not leave. They do not just stay there waiting for them to be fed. And yet Jesus is saying, they don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns. Jesus was saying, your heavenly Father feeds them. Can you see that? It said, your heavenly Father. Whose heavenly Father? So your heavenly Father. It is our heavenly Father. Jesus did not refer to the bird's heavenly Father. Because the bird does not have a relationship with God. The bird's relationship with God is that of a creator. To the birds, God is their creator. But to us, God is our heavenly father. He has not only created us, he redeemed us. Double ownership po si God sa atin. He did not only choose to give us the breath of life, but He also imprinted us that we are the only one created in His likeness. That is how valuable we are to God. When the vegetation was made, He said at the end of creation, it is good, it is only man. At the end of the creation of man, what did He say? It is very Good. He said, it is very good. Tayo lang po yun na very good sa lahat ng creation niya. That is how valued, how important, how precious we are to God. We are the apple of His eyes. We are loved. Aren't you far more valuable than to Him than they are? Do you think He will withhold feeding us? Do you think He will withhold giving you enough food? I don't think so. Because we are more valuable than the birds of the air, than any animal. You are far more important, far more valued. We are children of God. That is the value that we have for the Father. That is our worth as far as God is concerned. And verse 27 follows with this. Can all your worries add a single moment in your life? Can or cannot? Cannot! Dr. Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic said that worry produces a lot of diseases, ulcers, Cardiovascular disease. No wonder in the old age, madaming may heart problem, merong breathing problem. Lahat ng klaseng medical issues are brought about, can be brought about by worry. It gives you ulcers, it gives you heart ailment, it gives you all the other known diseases that can pr give pressure. It gives you, that is what worry gives you. As a matter of fact, when Pastor Joey had his heart attack, one of the things that the doctor reminded him was to not worry and not be stressed. Pastor Joey is not a worrier. He's such a cool guy. Diba? Ako yung worrier. And my worry rubs off to him. There were times before when the funds were not enough, when paying of bills were a problem, he would always tell me and remind me, Ginutom ka na ba ni Lord? Were there, were there ever a time na nawalang ka ng pagkain sa mesa? Hindi eh. As a matter of fact, we're, it was always in plenty. He always tells me, he always reminds me, don't look at me. Look at God. Look upon God. I am just a channel of His blessings. We are all but instruments. Tayong mga magulang, we are just instruments. It, it is the Almighty Father who actually provides for our needs. Amen? So if you're worrying, can your worry add a moment to your life? No, mga kapatid. As a matter of fact, nababawasan ang buhay natin every time we worry. Every time our minds, because hindi ka makatulog, you, you become weak, your knees are buckling, your sweat glands are, are extensively uh, producing sweat. It doesn't add any. 
So why? Why choose to worry? There's this poem that was written, and it said, said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know. So he, they were observing the people going about. I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, Friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. When the sparrows can very well acknowledge that God is providing for them, what more, His precious creation, why can we not value ourselves with the same value that God is giving us? Why can't we give a value that is worthy of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross? It is an upfront to God when we worry. We are telling Him, Lord, what you're telling me is not true. Your love for me is not enough. That is what we do when we worry. That is what we're telling God. Lord, hindi mo yan ibibigay sa akin. Or, baka it is not yet now. When we worry, we are telling God, Lord, what you're telling me is not enough. I need more assurance. What assurance, what other assurance do we want to have? Because worry undervalues your value to God. When God says, I love you, we say, Lord, hindi, hindi mo ako mahal. We deny it or we say, you don't love me as much as I know you can love me. That's what worry does. We negate God's promises and we say that God is not telling the truth by saying that He loves us. From verse 28, he follows, And why worry about your clothing? So he asked us to look at the birds. Now he's asking us to look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon King Solomon, the wisest of all kings, in all his glory was not dressed so beautifully. I can imagine Jesus while he was in the sermon on the, while, while he was doing his sermon on the mount. All you could see was green, green grass. And popping out from the green grass were beautiful little flowers of white, of yellow, of blue, and purple. And do you know that during this time, as I've said, they don't have colors on their clothes because the extraction of color is very expensive. That's why color was, was uh, only given to the royalty. It was only the royals who could afford colors on their clothes. That's why their colors were browns and whites and beige and gray because those were the only color that you can readily extract from the bark when you get it from the bark. That's the color of the bark. When you strip it off the collar, it becomes white. But still, Jesus was saying, look at the lilies of the field. They have such beautiful blue and purple hues, which was the most expensive color to extract during that time. That's why blue and purple was exclusive to the kings and the royals. And yet Jesus was saying, they're not buying clothes. They're not weaving clothes. They do not have a, they do not have their, uh, ano ba mahal na damit? Tamo, hindi ko na nga alam mga mahal na damit eh. Diba? Okay naman yung $5 na blouse. Hindi naman halatang $5, diba? Asa nagdadala yan, sabi nga nila. But no value, no amount of value can you put on the provision that God gives of the beautiful color hues that He has provided for the lilies. And if He is providing for the lilies so beautifully exquisite colors, do you think He will withhold anything from us? Will He not give you what it is that you want when these lilies of the field are just sitting there? Gazing, so pumuporma lang sila, rumarampa lang sila ng kanilang kulay. And they exude the most beautiful of colors. And if God 
so care so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow. He will certainly care for you because you are more precious than Him. Remember, we are the only creation that are special. Why? Because God gave His breath to us. He gave His imprint on us. That is why we are special among all all of his creation we are very good in god's sight that is how precious and how valuable we are when he said why do you wonder when this grass and these flowers are just going to die in a short time in a short while but look you are more precious than that you are going to live 80 years and make a mark in this world and Jesus gets to the, to the whole point of the matter. Why do you have so little faith? That is the whole thrust of worry. It is because we do not trust the one who made us. We do not trust the one who redeemed us. Do you know that God has double ownership on us? He did not only create us and take us for his own, but he redeemed us, giving us his one and only son. So he said, don't worry about this thing, saying what we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear, because that is not your value. If Jesus, if God gives to the birds and gives colors to the lilies, you are more valuable than that. So do not worry about what you will wear. Do not worry about what you will drink. Do not worry about what you will eat. Romans 8.32 says this, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? That's the secret. God will graciously give us. He was able to give and sacrifice his one and only son. Any parent here that I will ask, if you are ready and willing to give up your son for someone who you don't know or someone who is your enemy, all of us will say, no, I cannot. But God, in all his great love and value for you, sacrificed and gave his only son. He did not spare even the most valuable person to him. Do you think he will spare giving you food? Do you think he will spare giving you a, a husband? Do you think he will spare giving you a house to live in? Do you think he will spare your retirement? If he was able to sacrifice his own son, don't you think he is willing to give far and beyond what you can even think of, what even you can imagine to be your need because God already knows your need. That is your worth. That is our value. And because of that, you are precious and valuable. That's why Jesus said, do not worry. Worry not. That is our baon for the year 2021. We will not worry. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. If you are worrying, it's tantamount to you not believing in God. Because time and time again, God said, I will provide for you. I will give to you. I will, I will give you presents, not only things that you need, but even the things that you want. And oftentimes, we don't even know that we need those things, and yet God is faithfully providing for them. But your heavenly Father already knows. You remember the preaching of Pastor Butch? That the, that the, that the gods of the unbelievers before, they were people, they were they were uh, created mga statwa, di ba? You would talk to them, but they cannot answer. You will talk to them, they cannot listen because they have ears, but they do not listen. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. When you are worrying, you reduce God to that. You equate God to them. But that's not our God. You talk to Him, He answers. He weeps with you. He cries with you. He gives you the things that you need. Is there anything to worry about? No. Jesus said, do not worry. And when he says, do not worry, do you know that it demands an action? And the action that it demands is immediate. 
When he says, do not worry, do it immediately. If you are worried, stop. If you are not worried, don't even start. Because he said, your heavenly father already knows what you need. So what do we do? Jesus even gave the resolution. Jesus even tells us what to do. And that is said in the next verse. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first. What's that word? First. Remember verse 24 when he said you cannot serve both God and mammon? You cannot serve both God and money? He is saying here, seek first. What is the first thing in your heart? What is the foremost in your heart? What is the focus in your heart? And Jesus said, this is what you do. We will replace whatever it is that is in your heart with this. But seek ye first his kingdom. That is the first thing. That is the foremost thing. The, rest, the solution to worry is that we de displace whatever it is that is our focus and put God's kingdom and his righteousness into our lives. Remember the prayer? What was the prayer that Jesus taught? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It is his kingdom that we should pursue. It is his presence that we should pursue. It is his righteousness that we should desire. And what did Jesus promise? And all, all, will he, will he withhold anything? He said, all these things will be added unto you. A verse that we've sung, we've memorized, we've placed in our hearts. Always seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And your worry will dissipate. Trust him. Lord, wala pa po yung Pasko. Lord, na-deny na naman yung Pasko. Lord, matatapos na yung kontra ko. Lord, hindi ko na mahuhulugan yung bahay ko. Lord, nalubog yung bahay ko sa baha. Lord, ang dami nilang kailangan sa Pilipinas. Try to seek God's righteousness. Try to seek God's kingdom first. And see if that peace that He promised, He said the peace that passes all understanding, the kind of peace that no one can give, nothing can give, will not envelope you and cause you not to worry. Because worry devalues undervalues your value to God. So he said, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough worries of itself. If you are going to worry about something, worry only for the concerns of the day. Do not worry about the past. You cannot do anything about that anymore. Don't worry about tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You know what will dissipate worry from your heart? Trust the one who created you and called you his own. You say, Tita Bari, mahirap yata yan. Paano ko sinurender ko lahat kay God and tell him, Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, I give you everything. Lord, I surrender everything to you. And Lord, I, Tita Bari, ko hindi na siya bumalik. Tita Bari, dangerous yata yun na if I surrender everything to him. Then try worrying more. Worry ka na lang. Ba, would you rather take the option of worrying all your life, always having that you're sweating like pebbles on your forehead. Jesus said, seek, pursue, run after. Seek first the kingdom of God. Would you rather hold on to what you know and hold on to the unknown or hold on to the one who knows the future, and holds that future in his hands. When you know God, the more worry will dissipate from your heart because worry undervalues your value to God. Do not put God vis-a-vis -vis the things that you own, the things that you worry about, the person that you pursue, but instead seek first God and his righteousness, and all these things 
shall be added unto you. Let us pray. Our dear Father God, 2020 has not been easy. We confess that we are scared and anxious and worried. But Lord, if you did not withhold your very own son to us, giving him to us to be our salvation, that we can be able to come and have a relationship with you, what else will you withhold? You will not withdraw your love from us because you said you love us. We will trust, Lord. Help us even with the dear Holy Spirit to pursue only those that are from you, to pursue you, to get to know you, so that we will be able to trust and know that you our God. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for the assurance that we are of great value to you. We are more precious than the pearls. We are more precious than your most precious creation because, Lord, we are that. You have not only created us but redeemed us. And, Lord, we pray that you may help us to pursue you diligently through the year 2021. Allow us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. You love us more than we can fathom. And we pray, Lord, that it is in your righteousness that we will all seek you first. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.